Hey guys, Cam Wilson, Cam McClellan, welcome to today's Wealth Squad. Talking about why we're jugglers. Why we're jugglers and why we've got good facades. <laughs> this is my facade. Been working out? Yeah, yeah I'll work out. Found a way to bring it in. Just did a thousand. <laughs> so, um, we are jugglers and everyone who owns investment property are jugglers too because what they're juggling, it's a juggling act. Top off jugglers. Top off. So what we're talking about guys is when you've got an investment property, lots of decisions to make. So you need to decide for yourself, how do you have a house that's appealing to tenants, gets right valuations, uh, is robust, durable, all those things, but at the same time, cost effective and money spent where it should be spent rather than wasted on either overdoing your facade, overdoing your gardens, overdoing your specifications. So lowering repairs and maintenance and giving you a higher, which means gives you a higher rental return, meaning a lower loss cost to hold. Yeah. In effect. So we had a question come in from someone saying, I've just built my first investment property and I'm looking at spending $30,000 on the landscaping. So. Um, do we do landscaping? Jump in. I'm actually pretty good at landscaping. So, um, or coordinating landscaping. There's two things you want with landscaping. A backyard, which is basically grass. So grass or concrete. What is that? Um, Robust. Yeah, um, tenants like the feel of a large um, large backyard. So if you usually take off garden bed, so you might have a couple of trees just to break up the back fence or some of like that, sort of small, not large trees, ones that are gonna grow just above fence height, just to break up the harshness of the back fence. The rest of it is grass. When someone walks out, it feels large, gives them a perception of um, a nice open space, even though you might have a fairly small backyard. Um, a concrete area, and, and usually flat is good because kids want to, um, you know, want to play on flat, get the trampoline, whatever it may be. Um, avoid anything, any stone or dust type material, like lily oil toppings and that sort of thing are terrible because that gets dragged through your house. Um, front facade, there's two things you need to worry about front facade. You want to minimise cost, but maximise um, valuation appeal. So Aesthetics. What a, aesthetics, so hence, you want to look as good as you can, even though underneath might not be as attractive. It is though. <laughs> Uh, so, at the front, as you look at um, colour, colour concrete driveway, um, the facade of the house, so like three different materials minimally across it, so it's not just one brick box. So you, wanna, you might have a bit of timber, a bit of stone, a bit of render, uh, a bit of woodwork. Did I say timber and woodwork? Maybe. Twice. Yeah. Um, garden wise, getting back to that, um, garden, a couple of established plants and then a number of um, smaller plants which will become more established so it yep. doesn't feel like you've got every, your whole garden's brand new that big. Now this can be done quite cheaply so you might have uh, tan bark over the gardens, two established plants and lots of smaller ones that will grow um, and then you might have some larger stone which is not going to get dragged through your house for or for some basic paving. Yep. So the cost can be quite low, but give you a good appeal when the valuer comes past. I'll add to that as well, guys, and I encourage you to do it. Go for a drive around an area. You'll pick the houses that are the rental properties. The gardens aren't maintained. They yeah. look horrible. So when you're designing your landscape in front garden particularly, as yeah. Cam said, need some nice trees, need a bit of a layout cut or be <coughs> grass, have a think about or talk to people about what will be the hardest wearing and the least maintenance because tenants aren't well known for their regard for maintaining your property as nicely as possible. Backyard's an easy one, if your grass is growing too high, you can cut it, as Cam said, yep. mainly grass and concrete. But if you've got plants, trees, weeds overgrowing the whole area, well, very different. If you're building new, just to go on, on the grass side of things, because grass is quite costly, if you're building new, um, a good trick with, um, or a good agreement to have with your landscaper, because they're usually in that local area pretty regularly, is for the first six weeks for them to, every second day, go around and put a uh, watering system on or have some of those um, soaker hoses on timers to come on. The nature strip grass, um, don't get that put down until after the tenants are in there or it's basically every trade is gone. Because regardless of how many different trades you ask not to drive on the nature strip, they'll drive on the nature strip and they'll kill that grass and you're gonna have to replace it. So yeah. keep that in mind guys. Another question we had, um, I'm doing investment property, I wanna put timber floors through the house. Mm. Now, let me talk about that one. My ultimate perfect flooring for my entire investment property would be tiles. Tiles, yeah. Now, not practical because people aren't going to rent it. You need carpet in some rooms. But you need to think, guys, about how durable and hard wearing and how much maintenance is required. So, Cam talked about Lilydale topping outside. Imagine you've got nice new timber floors, tenant moves in day one, 
gets a stone caught in the tread of their shoes and scratches the bejesus out of your floors. Guess what guys, your maintenance bill, their bond won't cover it. You gotta come in, send the floors, redo the whole thing. That's wear and tear. Tiles, nice and easy. Yeah. The, the stone will break their shoe from the impact of the tile. So you wanna think about the materials in your flooring, materials in the house, and I guess overall, make smart decisions on what adds value and appeal, doesn't cost money. Yeah.